Hello, welcome to another one of my circuit tutorials. Today we're going to be working with events. So the event center, receiver, and the the event itself. If you remember buttons, no, I mean trigger zones as well, they are a form of triggering, activation, whatever you want to call it. Events themselves are something you could use as that as well. Now, I'll be showing you what each of these do, how to link them together, and how to use them in circuitries. So we're going to be starting with the event receiver. The event receiver is the thing that gets triggered and outputs a signal at a certain time. It's either when our sender calls our receiver, or when something happens in the game. So we're going to be going over that. So if we go onto a makerpad, click configure and configure the event receiver, we see a few options here. So we have room initialized, session initialized. These are basically for when the room itself you know, becomes a thing. Or the session. Session is basically server, right? As soon as this instance gets created. Uh, then we have local player spawn, which means when you spawn, update 30 hertz, it sends out a signal out here every 30 hertz. Player left, so whenever a player leaves, on game start, when you know the game starts, if you have anything that runs on the game system, for example, with, with the on game start, I mean something like when you Click start on paintball, dodgeball, any any public game on Rec Room. On game end, same thing. Player collision, when two players collide. AI spawned, AI died, test event and new event. So I'm gonna go over these again and show you all the pins. So room initialized only has the power pin. Session initialized as well. Local player spawned as well. Update 30 hertz has power and you know the time and seconds that it takes to update I'll be showing you what it is later if I don't forget player left so opposite signal as soon as a player leaves and tells us who left on game start on game end only power pins player collision you know, signal when the event happens, and the two events that uh, the two players that collided, AI spawned. So basically, you know, power and the AI that spawned, and AI died. So when it dies, which AI died and who killed it? We have test event. Test event only gets triggered when we press our send test event button on our circus v2 tab. Last one, new event one, which is the event we spawn ourselves. The new event one is the first ever thing you see on your Circuit V2 menu called new event. It's just these little things. So, we're going to be focusing more on 30 hertz and new event for today because, as I've said previously in the video, Circuits V2 are more self-explanatory when you know how pins react. And you'll know what, what happens, right? So, we're going to be using the sender and receiver at a new event mostly. So, that's for the receiver. Receiver gets activated as soon as a certain thing happens, right? As soon as this gets activated by some function or a sender. So, that's why we're going to go over to the sender next. The event sender, the only job of the event sender is to trigger the event receiver. But the thing with the sender is, as soon as we activate it, it could also output signals so we could do something after that. Now if you look over here, there's these two, let's say, Wi-Fi icons, right? Wireless icons. Basically that means that this outputs a wireless signal and this receives it. Now how do we make this sender, this specific sender, trigger this receiver? It's simple. We first, as I already did, configure our receiver to our custom event, which is the new event one. We click it and event sender. 
The event center can only be configured to any custom event you have, nothing else. So we click that, and that's all the setup we need. So as soon as we're going to activate this, this is going to output a signal as well. Now, on its own, this doesn't seem very practical yet. Well, I mean, the receiver itself has functions you might might need and other things, but the sender and the custom event and things don't look as useful yet. So that's why we're going to go over the new event and what you can do here, because this holds a lot of functions you can use. Okay, so let's start by configuring a new event one. We greet it by two options, change name and add property. Okay, so I called my event event. So we see, so we'll know what we're selecting. So we're going to start with the properties now. The properties have a lot of functions in these. So port name is basically, basically what you're doing right now is creating a pin. Any, any pin you see on any circuit, you can make here. The port name is what it's going to say by the pin. So I'm going to give you an example of an integer. So we're going to modify it and name it int. Click OK. And then through the types, we're going to search for integer at the end. So let's go through them first. Boolean, as you know, true or false. List Boolean, basically a list of Boolean values. Float, so more precise values, basically decimal, 0, 0 0.1, 2, 3, you know. And a list of them integer which we will need so whole numbers one two three four and the list of integers string basically text and list of strings vector three so basically coordinates in a 3d space and a list of them creation object anything we base anything that basically that's created and a list of them player just players list as well ai they also have their own list buttons Basically, you can hook up buttons to your receivers. So basically, you could send out information through one one event and tell some other part of the circuitry what button to you work with, for example. List of buttons, dynamic light, basically lights, emitter, look at, control point, basically for AI, piston, player spawn point, sampler, Sound effect gizmo, text tool, toggle button, and trigger volume. They all have their own lists in case you want to store multiple. But we're gonna go with int. What? Just a normal int, no lists. Click create. And you can see something happened. So as soon as we created it here, there's the event, right, which we configured, we made an integer pin. The integer pin then appears on the sender and receiver. How do we use it? How we could use it is we activate the sender and give it a specific integer. The sender activates the receiver, but not only does it, you know, make it send out a signal, but also this value right here. So what we could do is use a variable, right? Or even better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spawn in a button from that we've learned before. And we're going to spawn in an instance integer and, it, and set value. That's all that we've already learned. So if you have, if you don't know what these do yet, go to the previous vid videos on my channel and you will learn everything about them. It's simple. You won't have any problems with them. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to click the button, activate the sender. We're going to put something in here. This specific value is going to be sent over the set value and the value will be stored in here. Now we also gonna spawn in what we already spawned in before, which is a two string, for example. And our trusty show notification. There. So let's hook these up. We have to start from the beginning. So we're gonna press the button and we're gonna activate the sender. Boom. The sender will hold a value which we'll manually add. So we gotta click it and add whatever. So 7654, why not? So when we activate the sender, the receiver gets activated. The receiver outputs a signal. 
the receiver also outputs a value. Now, where, where do we need the value? We need the value in the set value. Why? Because we want to set, send this specific thing, which is now over here, in here. And how do we save values in an instance? We go through a set value. So we hook up the value we want to send to the value pin and the variable itself to the variable pin. And after that, we're going to send whatever we have in here to the two string, which means that whatever value we put in here gets converted to text. The text then goes to the show notification. Now all we need to do is activate the show notification, which we do with the set value because this is the last thing that's gonna happen before on show notification. So basically, button, events, set value, show notification. That's, that's how it will go. So we click the button, and there you go. So again, it's set, it sent this a signal. This then sent a, a signal wirelessly to the event receiver. The event receiver um, basically gets a signal and the value that is in the sender. It then sends it to the set value. We tell the set value we're working with this variable and with, that we want to set this specific value in here. Now again, this specific value is what we set in here. After that, we send whatever we have stored in here to the toString. The toString then converts it into text, puts it into the show notification, and we display it on our screen. So let's just change whatever we have on the sender, just to 45. Click the button, 45. That's how you could work with senders. So now that you've learned this, you can see that the sender itself Right, and the custom event are a lot more useful than you might, might have thought. Now, just for a quick note, events can hold multiple pins, so we click it again, and we could add another property. We could add a float, you can name it whatever, in my case I'll name it float again, click OK, click create, and there you go. We could input a float, and, you know, event receiver. Now. That is pretty much it for the senders in a simple way. This is as simple as I could probably explain it to you. So, if you have any questions about senders or anything that I've done in this video, feel free to let me know in the comments below or join my Discord server, my class server BOC for circuits, which will be down below. And I'll try to answer them as fast as I can.